I don't know that I've seen this interact. Let's just try this. Let's see. Let's see how this goes for science. Because if the damage is double to us, and then it gets halved on the way back, does that mean it's doing exactly the same amount of damage? There might be a rounding problem in there. Today on Commander Replay, it's Kalia times four as I take on each of my Discord moderators, find out which Kalia will win next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing four Kalias today. Oh, I'm excited about this. We are playing Kalia Dragons. Uh, let's take a look at this opener. This, this is not the best, honestly. This is more late gamey. Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan this. Um, we can make this work. We can wheel if we need to. We got Dowsing Dagger, which can, uh, that's some nice ramp right there. Uh, we have one of my favorite cards that, like, you never get to run. You know where this is going? This is going to my red creatures I want to play tribal deck. Uh, even though it's probably not great in that deck. But, Scourge of Courage is, is a very interesting card. Um, we'll keep this one. It's very mana intense, but if you have the mana for it, you can absolutely control the board. Is it good? By today's standards, no, not really. Like, Dracuseth and Balefire Dragon, just, they kind of do the same thing with way less mana. Uh, that's our first, uh, we won the die roll here, we'll go first. Uh, play the Clifftop Treat since it comes in tapped. Hey, we'll pass like that. But, yeah, there, there are many dragons that blow creatures up now that don't require mana to be sunk into them. Uh, which has really made this thing go the way of the dodo. You really don't see this card anymore. Uh, and for that reason, I put it into this deck, because I've always kind of liked it. Uh, even though, like, its actual performance is usually... Eh. I've been waiting to live the dream with this thing, where we just blow everything up. Uh, and the fact that we're playing four Kalias today, controlling the skies, is actually going to be a pretty big deal. It will take a lot of mana to do it. Hopefully that Dowsing Dagger is going to help. But... It was too exciting of a prospect for me to uh, not run it in this deck. So, yeah, so I put this deck together pretty quickly. Uh, here's a look at it. I added some of the, like, very standard dragons in, but I also tried to throw a few spicy picks in there. Uh, some of the spicy picks got cut as I was trying to get down to 100, which is frustrating, but uh, Storm Breath Dragon, it's not one you see all the time anymore, made a splash in standard, I think, right? Um, and the Pro White could be helpful against Kalia and Angels. Scourge of Courages is my other spicy pick. Uh, Hellkite Courser isn't exactly spicy, but I never get to run it, uh, and I'm excited about possibly being able to run it. Dream Pillager I've never used, but, uh, I'm excited to get a crack with it. Yeah, and sadly it looks like the rest of my spicy picks got cut here. I had, uh, Velo Makas in the deck for a second, I had some of the, uh, spirits out of, uh, Kamigawa in the deck for a minute, and, uh, that all, that all got cut. Makes me sad, but, uh, anyway, brings it back to our turn here, we'll play this Plains, we'll... Play the Dowsing Dagger. Opponent got an authority of the consoles in. That's going to be really strong. Uh, doesn't matter where we put these. I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be much ground-based attacking in this game. Uh, and KO will gain some life. I guess we could have given him the KO and KO wouldn't have gained the life. Whoops. Yeah, authority is a strong play right here, particularly against us. Like, the angels won't be as hasty. Dragons with haste is a thing that beats you. So, yeah, that's a really, really strong piece. Now, maybe all my fun creatures got cut, but I did put some fun cards in this deck. So, uh, we got Citadel Siege, which will kind of do a very similar thing. Uh, and we can just keep tapping down uh, people's stuff, namely their Kalia, or whatever the biggest thing they have every turn is. Uh, if you've never used this on Dragon's Mode, it's actually really powerful against combat decks. It does not show up much. Uh, but if you know someone's playing combat or Voltron, and the thing you have to deal with now is, like, Pro White and Hexproof. Yeah, you have to, like, make sure you remove whatever those pieces are. But, uh, against combat decks, this is actually a pretty strong card. Um, Mandate of Peace. Oh, that one got cut, too. Kristen always wants me to run that one, but I do have Comeuppance and, uh, Settle the Wreckage in here. So opponents will be in for some surprises. I do have Crackling Doom, which, like, most Mardu players run, but uh, I just haven't run it all that much over the years. Um, so I'm excited that, uh, you know, hopefully we can get a crack with that one at some point when it's uh, at a key moment in the game. Could be very exciting. Fighter class, huh? What are we doing here? Uh, I guess we are going to play a Luxury Suite. We'll play a Fighter class. Uh, I think we'll just get a Mask of Memory. You can also get a Hearth and Home. Mm, Hearth and Home seems pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, we're gonna need... We have the wheel. The problem is if we don't, like... Sometimes you dead spot with the wheels. Mask of Memory is always a safe bet. Like, I've had it happen where you'd wheel and draw, like, five lands, and you're like, oh, God, we're in trouble. <laughs> 
Mask of Memory ensures that doesn't happen. Uh, also, yeah, that's just, I didn't think about this too. So Reanimate makes Mask of Memory a lot better. They work together really well. We dump this big one in there, and then we pull it out for one mana and a bunch of life. Painful Truths. Yep, nice card draw. So as I mentioned, we are playing Kalia of the Vast, and uh, everyone is playing... Actually, no, Fish is playing a different deck than the rest of us. No. Oh, Fish is on Kalia of the Vast. Okay, so Fish was originally going to play Kalia Zenith Speaker, and at some point changed her mind. So uh, we are all playing the same commander. It is Kalia. Four mana for a 2-2. Flying, whenever it attacks, you may put an angel, demon, or dragon from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking that opponent. Uh, classic commander, been around for ages, was in the original commander product, been a consistently popular commander over the past decade. <laughs> What's funny is I've had Kalia, I've had a Kalia deck in paper a couple times, and whenever you pull out a Kalia deck in paper, the table just groans. Like, no one is excited <laughs> to face a Kalia deck. Just like, oh god, I need removal in my opening hand. If not, it's gonna be a problem. But this is kind of a fun equalizer here since we all have it and we're all gonna be like relatively on the same plan. Now, we did just break it up. I'm on dragons. Uh, I forget who was. Uh, someone was on angels. Wait, random zombie card right there. Uh, zombie is on demons. I'm not sure what fish is up to. KO may have done something weird and like changeling based. Uh, we, we had briefly talked about that. I had thought about doing something like that, but I'm just like, ah. And so I think this video was born out of uh, this past week. I posted the Kalia Angels video, uh, which people were excited about. That kind of got Kalia on everyone's mind. So everyone started thinking about Kalia decks. And here we are playing some more Kalia. Cast our commander. It comes in tapped. KO will gain a life. Yeah, like this card is just so much worse <laughs> without haste. Uh, Giselle is in the graveyard. I mean, oh, no, they're going to unburial rights it. Giselle is in. Yep. How'd they get it in the grave? Oh, max hand size with Painful Truth, probably? Yep, that seems like it probably happened. Uh, I was just thinking that, like, if they leave that there, we should probably pull that out with the reanimate. Gisela has the ability to upset this table. Now, I guess, you know, I wonder if you could say that about a lot of creatures in this game. Like, half the creatures in this game will probably be, like, haymakers that can easily run a table. Gisela is going to be in the upper echelons of those type of cards. So, like, when I think about who are going to be the strongest things in this table, uh, for Angels, it's going to be Avacyn, Sarah's Emissary, and Gisela that I'm primarily worried about from, like, an interaction standpoint. Uh, Aurelia, if she shows up, will get you killed, but doesn't necessarily, like, lock you out of the game like the other ones just do. Terrible, terrible things to you. Angelic Arbiter could be pretty nasty also. For the demons, you're worried about Razaketh and Vilas. Uh, there's probably some other good ones in there that I'm missing and forgetting because I don't know the demon card pool that well. But uh, those are the two that are on my mind that are like coming to the top. Who's at the top of nasty for our deck? Man, we have a lot of things. Uh, Blast Furnace Hellkite gets you killed. Udfara Hellkite. Uh, so, you know the thing with the dragons? I've been playing against the dragons deck for a long time. I've, I have the dragons deck as well. It's been sitting in a box. Haven't played it in years. But at the time, in 2017, when the Commander Dragons deck came out, the problem that I noticed, because I was playing Angels a lot then, I still play Angels a lot, is that if you're playing dragons and someone else is playing literally anything else, it's like, we're both playing creatures, but your dragons are way better than any of the creatures that I'm playing. And... You know, that led to the Dragons deck winning a lot. And then the point that I'm getting to is that the Dragons also have combos with Dragon Tempest, Udvara Hellkite, and Scourge of Alcus. And, like, I've died to that a lot. The direct damage that you get from those decks is insane. That you get from those three cards is insane and can easily wipe a table depending on what's going on. But it looks like Zombie's the only one without a creature. Without a block. Uh, the fish doesn't have a block. We can go over to fish. Um, it won't be a ton of damage. Are we able to get... Yeah, we can get Dowsing Dagger and Mask of Memory. That'll be a good bit of value. Uh, you know what we should have just did? We should have just upgraded Fighter Class, and we would have done the exact same thing. Whoops. Uh, we'll send this one in the fish, because fish is coming out a little strong here. Um, uh, yeah, let's get Scourge. Oh, actually. Storm Breath is a blocker. Yeah, let's get the Storm Breath in. That's a blocker against Gisela, is what that is. Not this turn, but next turn it will be, so we're thinking a turn ahead here, but... Yeah, I am sad that I didn't just upgrade the uh, fighter class right there. Uh, Mask of Memory, Dowsing Dagger, Transform the Dowsing Dagger. Comeuppance probably keeps me from wheeling until I have to use it. Ah, uh, what are we discarding? There's Demonic Tutor. Discard the Scourge. We'll just leave it there for now. I like that land. I like what the tutor says. Yeah, we have <laughs> we have too many good things for this wheel. This wheel is going to be much later game play. What do we need? Hmm, do we tutor? Hmm. Oh, it's unfortunate. This is two colors. You can only get one with this. Whoops. We don't have any more creatures. Oh, that's interesting. Dream Pillager? Maybe we wait. Let's just wait on the tutor. 
we'll kind of see how the board develops over a turn, right? Like, in this game, a lot can happen in a turn. I mean, that's true of a lot of games, but I feel like with four Kali decks, that might even be more true. Uh, that just, you know, everyone's going to be dropping big, dumb stuff into play, and you're just like, oh, God. Sending Gisela back? No, going over to Kao. Kao's got a lot of life. Ooh, seven mana to make this thing monstrous. That is a bit. If we can do it early, though, Fish still has seven cards in hand. He might cast one here, but... Ooh, Rakdos, Lord of Riots is a magic card. Is Fish doing all tribes? Fish might just be doing good stuff. Uh, unfortunately, Gisela will upset how comeuppance works. And will not be... It'll be effective against the other two. It will not be effective against Fish. Uh, we should probably also be a little nervous about the Rakdos. There's an Ogre Battle Driver. KO doing... I don't know what KO's up to. <laughs> this is a nice source of haste. I wouldn't necessarily run it in this deck. Uh, I think there's much better ways to get haste. Lightning Greaves, Swiftfoot Foot Boots, and Dragon Tempests are the main three that I would go for. Uh, Ko's going to send a Kalia over to Fish. What does Ko have? Find out the nastiest card in his hand is. Angelic Arbiter. <laughs> That's a nasty one. Uh, that was mentioned in my list of creatures that could like really upset this game. What that means is it means it's actually a good time. Well... It's going to be awkward because we don't have a big creature in hand, but it uh, means we might actually be on the Storm Breath plan at some point. Yeah, that's a nasty one to land. I think removal is going to play a big role in this game, too. I mean, that's kind of the key against the Kalia deck. Like, most things can't just, like, tango with a Kalia deck and come out ahead. It's like, you need to beat Kalia with removal. The, the key is keeping Kalia out of play, keeping their, like, really important pieces out of play. They'll probably always have, like, at least one big thing, but if it's, you know, like... In our case, this is good, but this doesn't just, like, annihilate you. Uh, Rakdos can make you lose a game quickly. Gisela can make you lose a game quickly. <laughs> Angelic Arbiter doesn't make you lose... It can make it really difficult for you to win the game, is what that one does. Yeah, I mean, we're already kind of into, like, a board wipe would be good territory. Ryan Dynamo. Uh, zombie on the ramp plan over there. Not the worst idea. Given how the board's already sort of developed this way, like, if you can... If you have the board wipe, even better. But if you can, like, wait long enough for someone else to wipe the board while you're just ramping away, that's uh, it's a pretty good idea. Uh, would love to catch a big creature off the top that would give us something meaningful to do without getting uh, caught. Well, no, I guess if we attack, we can't cast anything. Oh, yeah, and we can activate the ability. Fish and KO. <laughs> Just poking at each other. Uh, Fish recently appointed to moderator in my Discord server, and uh, this is a game with all the moderators. Fish, KO, and Zombie. And we see a Mark of the Oni, what? You control Enchanted Creature. At the beginning of the end step, if you control no demons or ogres, sacrifice Mark of the Oni. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work exactly. At the beginning of the end step, if you control no demons. They do not control any demons unless... It draws a card... Soul Ring. Yeah, I mean, Zombie's ramped like crazy. Zombie's not even going to need Kalia and just start hard casting things. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to sacrifice? Yeah, I don't... Zombie must have misplayed that or misread that. I, I have to assume that he was thinking that this would sacrifice the creature. Uh, there's a creature. That's exciting. Oh, Zombie said he knows what it does. He just needed to do something. Yeah, I mean, he was ramping. He could have just held on to that. There's no reason to play that there okay what are we doing so we can attack or cast a spell we cannot do a both uh this thing does seven damage which gets which would get rounded down to three which is not enough to kill this gisella this is unfortunate uh ko has got some stuff yeah all right uh, fish is taken damage on ko will be double yeah damage on ko will be double that's pretty enticing I know fish is scary too. I'm trying to not just completely focus fish down. We'll probably have to in the next turn. Uh, pray for no Avison. Um, we'll go KO. Yeah, we'll swing into KO on this one since he's been gaining life. We'll continue to gain life. Um, we'll be kind of difficult to attack with the Angelic Arbiter. You know, put him kind of low on life and make him have to like play defensively. I mean, uh, yeah, fish could actually probably even kill KO. Probably a thing that could happen. Uh, Authority of the Consoles will trigger. This will be moderately useful next turn. Maybe not against fish, but it could actually kill the Arbiter pretty easily. Yeah, KO goes down to 17. That actually means he's in danger of dying to fish. We'll see how aggressive fish is feeling. This game has developed rather quickly. Uh, draw two with mask. More lands. Discard. We'll discard the planes, I guess. I just thought about it. So I copied this over from the Angel deck, and uh, the Angel deck was very heavy into planes because uh, all the casting costs were white and also they were trying to run them area and uh i never updated the like basic land counts because i would definitely spread them out a little bit more 
uh, which definitely means we want this Arid Mesa. We'll crack the Arid Mesa. Uh, we have a Triome in here. No Triomes. Let's just take a look at our colors. Pretty good white mana. Pretty good red mana. Yeah, we're doing pretty good on all of our fronts. Um, two more basics. Do we have two more basics? We do. We'll get this guy. Moldering Marsh. Pass like that. Uh, fish going straight to combat. Let's see what Fish is thinking. Interestingly, ooh, Angelic Arbiter makes the Rakdos less good because now they can't cast stuff. Eh, they're coming our way. That's a pretty nasty attack is what that is. How much mana do we have? Four, five, eight, nine. Oh, we're short. What we can do, though. Oh, that's double damage. Oh, what happened? So Gisela would deal double damage, which means every... Ooh, wait a second. If a source would deal damage, I don't know that I've seen this interact. Let's just try this. Let's see. Let's see how this goes for science. Because if the damage is doubled to us, and then it gets halved on the way back, does that mean it's doing exactly the same amount of damage? There might be a rounding problem in there. Very curious. No blocks. Did it work? No, it did not. Oh, that was first strike. Nope, but it's still not gonna... Uh, that did not work the way that I had hoped it would. So, because it's prevented, maybe it never actually gets doubled the first time, is what I'm guessing happened. Uh, still, that's a fog. <laughs> Fogs are important, because that would have been a giant hit. I mean, I guess we could have blocked some of it. Still, a hit for 12 would have been a lot. Uh, in this turn, we've got Scourge of Valkus, so even though the damage is maybe lower than we hope, with this and this, we might be able to take down the Gisela. And if we take down the Gisela, we can reanimate the Gisela. Oh, is this the time for Scourge? We'd have to do it twice. Oh god, that's so bad. Yeah, Gisela is such bad news. Yeah, maybe we're getting some... Maybe we should just get removal. <laughs> Four Cartographer, two ETBs, one for a land, one for haste and 2L. I will say that... This is consistently one of the most undervalued angels. Uh, the two that people undervalue are this one and Chancellor of the Annex. Uh, when most people build an angel deck, uh, they get really kind of focused on, like, all the ones that do good things for you. And because that's what most of them do. Most of them, it's like, reanimate a creature, protect your stuff, uh, maybe give them some keywords or whatever the case is. All great. That's all good stuff. Uh, there's a couple of them that really put a hurting on your opponents, and that's Angelic Arbiter and Chancellor of the Annex. And they are fantastic cards. Uh, I've had many people groan upon landing Ange Angelic Arbiter. For the people that haven't seen it before, they're just like, what is this? It can lock people down pretty hard if they're in, like, a creature combat deck. Like, you have to remove this thing, otherwise you're going to have a pretty bad time. Let's see what Ko's thinking. Ko wants to uh, come over this way. Ooh, he's sending everything. Find out what the worst thing in Ko's hand is. Uh, Wisp. Weave Angel Exile. Another target creature. Weird. Targeting Kalia, so they're going to pull Kalia out of combat. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, it's an interesting, that's a cute little trick to, uh, like, save Kalia if she can't get in safely. There's a lot of damage coming at us, uh, but we can... The Arbiter is good against fish, right? That's the concern, but it's also kind of bad for us. So maybe the Arbiter has seen its day. Uh, we block. The Arbiter goes down. We go to 15, though. Ooh, God, that hurt. Gisela. So brutal. Probably need to start thinking about using that tutor. What are we getting? Use a boardwalk. Ooh. Um, Crux of Fate would be a good play. Crux of Fate is a very good play. Does fish have Teferi's protection? Hmm, that's a concern. Uh, zombie cast Kalia comes in tapped. Karlak is interesting. It's an extra combat and first strike. Uh, maybe we do it this way. We attack fish first. No, uh, yeah, okay, and Arbiter's gone. We attack fish first. See how much we can get done with the Scourge of Valkus. Uh, because if, like, if we try to take the Gisela down, fish will use protection to try to keep Gisela up. What do we draw? A land. We'll just hang on to that in case we want to discard it. We'll send both of these into fish. Is that still not going to be enough? Seven gets rounded down to three. And when this enters, uh, that'll get rounded down to one. Oh, frustrating. Uh, put the Scourge of Alcus in. You want know a card I miss uh, that this reminds me of is Molecure Blood Witch. Uh, is a 4-4, I think, with flying that also has protection from white. And that protection from white has saved my skin. Many times in the past. Okay, there's a Teferi's Protection. Yeah, we needed to watch out for that. So we probably go settle the wreckage, is what we do. Or we get a Teferi's Protection of our own. Uh, you know what? That actually works out, though, because we actually weren't going to kill it. And uh, we got fish to burn it anyway. And now we can respond to everything. This is this is actually good. Uh, we don't get to do the thing, but we'll play the land. Ooh. Angelic Arbiter is in Ko's Graveyard. Do we wait on that? Anything in Fish's Graveyard? Nothing in Zombie's Graveyard. We got this thing in our graveyard. I keep forgetting about this guy. Um, yeah, Gisela makes this thing so bad, though. Let's fire off the Demonic Tutor. <laughs> Citadel Siege is also not terrible, although... Uh, maybe is this a time for Citadel Siege? KO is a lot of small stuff, which is still a problem. Yeah, we need we need Gisela dead, is what we need. So, I think it's going to be settled the wreckage. As I'm thinking about how things are going to play out here, I think I'm just going to reanimate 
the Angelic Arbiter. That'll once again slow fish, that'll slow everyone else down. Because we also have to worry about KO here as well. Oh, down to eight. Uh, at some point we're gonna need to find Piru and gain a bunch of life back. Yeah, those Gisela hits, those hurt. Yep, fish is gonna try it. Uh, we'll just settle. I'm trying to get back to using Settle the Wreckage and Comeuppance a lot more. <laughs> Creatures have gotten really good over the past couple years. Uh, and so, like, attacking is back in vogue. And, uh, yeah. A well-timed comeuppance or settle can do a lot. <laughs> KO said, hey, that's my play. Oh, God, I hope KO doesn't have the, uh, the settle. <laughs> KO says, looks like I've rubbed off on PJ in the right ways. And knowing him, he's meaning it in the dirtiest of possible contexts. <laughs> Told you guys I'm the destroyer of fun. <laughs> we are actually just, like, wide open to a board wipe, though. Someone just wants to wipe the board and it's kind of starting over. We have a wheel, which is cool, but... Uh, zombie could probably kill us? That's a concern. Some part of me did think that, like, maybe we should have gone to fairies also. I mean, KO could probably kill... No. Uh, well... Uh, yeah, that's not good. They're gonna exile the Angelic Arbiter. Uh, we're probably gonna die in this turn cycle. Yep, here it comes. Uh, Linvala. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Never quite got to... It's the Gisela, right? We just took so much damage off Gisela. Yeah, block Linvala. Die to the rest. Yeah, down we go. A Maria Shepherd. Uh, they can get a Linvala back. They need a land to do it. He's out of cards. Yeah, maybe the play is to get the fairies there, because then we just, like, don't die to stuff. But I also really wanted to get the Giselle out of play, and, like, I don't know what's going to happen with that wheel, so... Because then we, we survive, then we wheel, and then we give everyone a bunch of cards, and it kind of depends on what we hit, and I've just been having bad luck wheels lately. And, like, we just get... We continue to be in the same problem of, like... There's almost no amount of damage that'll kill fish. Uh, like, you just need so much. And, yeah, getting that Giselle out of there just... If someone played a board wipe, this game slows down a lot. And it just never happened, and I'm running a few. Uh, Archfiend of Despair is a magic card. I told I told him in chat, I'm like, please don't make this game take another hour. And Zombie said, it shouldn't with my hand. I'm like, okay, that's good news. Uh, that is double combat and double life loss. Uh... Has similar vibes to playing an Aurelia deck with Gisela right there. That's what that feels like. It's like the red-black way of doing that. Uh, does this kill fish? They can block the ground. Those plants might matter. The issue will become that Zombie then needs to deal with KO. Zombie still has a lot of life, and KO's stuff... He has a lot of small stuff. It's not. He doesn't have like any of the big I-kill-you-now kind of cards. There's one card for a Maria Shepherd, which is okay, but it's not. Fish goes down to 16. Doesn't block. I can block the thing. Oh, all the life loss happens at the end step. Uh, that means it's probably enough. They didn't attack with this one. Call you a trigger. Doom Whisperer. Okay. Uh, some of these are going into KO this time. Surveils too. Uh, you know, I think you can put a lot on the fact that that comeuppance play didn't work the way that I wanted it to. I was hoping that the damage would be doubled and then it would be halved, so it would be like it's doing normal damage to itself. But apparently that's not how it's calculated with the uh, prevention trigger. Uh, because then we, if we could have saved the comeuppance, we could have obviously saved it for one of those incoming attacks right there. Like, if I knew that that's how it plays, then I'd probably take the Rakdos hit and just block the Gisela, uh, which is still a shot for 12, but we have to play differently from there on out. But, you know, so we got focused kind of hard. KO, I think, has only attacked us. Based, eh, there was one attack into fish. Zombie didn't really take any attacks, which, you know, didn't take any heat off of us. I was really just kind of looking for someone to play the board wipe, and uh, no one did. Um, I do think that Zombie probably should have just sent this Archfiend in, though. Oh, he can't. It doesn't have haste. Right. Okay. Never mind. Uh, KO going to block Kalia. That's a good idea. Kalia goes down. Here's a Wheel of Fortune. I was kind of doing the math. I think he does have enough mana, assuming what he draws right here. But he does have enough mana for that to make sense because... What is that? He's got seven mana left. You can get things done with seven mana. You know, maybe we could have played that wheel, but I still had stuff that I was holding on to. Pact of the Serpent. What? Choose a creature type. Target player draws X cards and loses X life, or X is the number of creatures they control of the chosen... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's only two. It's not insane, but... Uh, I think the... When's this? At the beginning of each end step. we a lot of life loss happening at this end step. Arcane Signet. Draw Spellbomb. Turn target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's a thought. So, like, I mean, I guess the question is, like, can you keep Kalia in play, right? There are games where you'll just never, ever keep her in play. Um, but for the ones that you can, stuff like Phyrexian Reclamation should be pretty good. So that's a gamble to take, right? It depends on how heavy in reanimation you want to be. You have a lot of options. Uh, Orcus is a really cool card. I played that one on the channel one time, and that was like... I really enjoyed that deck. I would love to play it again. 
Uh, and not a lot of people were talking about it. It was pretty underrated. Just uh, didn't get a lot of hype for, like... There's a lot of utility in this thing. Here's the Archfiend Trigger. KO goes down to the Archfiend Trigger. Fish is down to 8. Uh, so Fish has got a hole to dig out of, but they did just get a fresh 7. What did Fish have in hand? Uh, Blast Furnace, Hellkite, Strionic Resonator. Uh, and Ancient Gold Dragon. Yeah, those cards. So Fish was really getting caught up with the uh, Angelic Arbiter. Kalia coming in. That's interesting. Unless Fish has haste, that play is... That's just not a strong enough play. I mean, basically anything other than, like, board wipe. Unless Fish also... I mean, maybe Fish has a settle or a comeuppance. And then they can wiggle their way out. You set up for next turn. Uh, Aegis Angel. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so that is an indestructible blocker, is what that is. But, uh, Fish's life is low, and with the double comp... Yeah, I think Zombie should just be able to force his way through. There's some trample in there, too. Uh, Fish Scoop's right there. Yeah, Fish says they got nothing. Yeah, they must have just not gotten anything with the wheel. Uh, yep, that's what happens. Two reanimate spells and a Skitterix. Yep. Yeah, Zombie out of hand. Uh, Zombie got lucky in the sense that, like, we just left him alone because he was just, he was only ramping all game. Um, like, maybe we should have sent an attack over there and maybe that takes the heat off of us, but... Yeah, I don't know, it's just, it's a highly aggressive game, and if the comeuppance doesn't backfire, uh, if we go for Teferi's instead of Settle, we give ourselves another chance to kind of stay in it. But, it is what it is. Uh, had some fun. Pretty fast-paced game with four Kalias going at it. And so, having now played Angel Tribal Kalia and Dragon Tribal Kalia, dragons do feel just a teeny bit stronger, uh, cause they're all very offensive-based, right? It's, like, if Gisela's not in play, we just run that table. Um, because with what we had with the uh, Tyrant's Familiar and, uh, Scourge of Alcus, like, we should be eliminating problems, uh, pretty freely, but Giselle was just eating up all the damage, and I guess Fish had a well-timed Fairy's Protection, and that card just kind of beats you. Um, if they don't have that and their stuff just dies, then we can do different things. Yeah, I guess the key to this game is, like, really just staying out of trouble. Uh, Zombie stayed out of trouble for most of the game, and that's sort of the key, so. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel, vote on which decks I play next, or if you want to get some good games of Spelltable, be sure to check out my Patreon at the link below.